Hi, my name's Andy and welcome to The Kendo Show. Today we're going to be talking about five things that you need to know before you start Kendo. Before we get started though, I just want to make it very, very clear that I'm not trying to talk anyone out of Kendo, quite the opposite. And I just want to make sure all the cards are on the table before you begin. Lots of people jump into Kendo without really knowing exactly what's involved. So this video is here just to help kind of combat that a little bit. And even if some of these things that I'm about to tell you are different to what you're expecting and they kind of put you off a little bit, please just give it a try anyway. I do urge you to do that. Kendall really is a wonderful thing and there's loads to be gained from it. So without further ado, let's get into those five things that you need to know before starting Kendall. Number one, kendo is always practiced barefoot. We don't wear any sort of footwear. There's no indoor shoes, um, no socks, anything like that. It's a barefoot um, activity, okay? So we're always barefoot. Occasionally, if you have an injury or a blister or something like that, there are sort of special socks that you can get that just cover the front part of your foot. Uh, but in general, um, we always practice barefoot. And those sort of things you're not supposed to wear in tournaments either. So um, tournaments are almost always barefoot too. Um, I know that in some other martial arts, um, there are sort of indoor shoes and stuff that they wear, like sort of kick shoes and stuff like that. We don't have anything like that in kendo. So um, in Japanese culture, uh, you may or may not know, but when you enter a building, um, you generally take your shoes off at the entrance and you leave them at the entrance whilst you um, sort of enter the building and do whatever you're supposed to be doing in there, whether it's your house or whether it's a public building, a school, it could be anywhere, but often you'll leave your shoes um, at the entrance, uh, go inside, do your activity, and then um, pick your shoes up again once you leave. Uh, Kendo is exactly the same way. We take off our shoes at the entrance to the dojo. We never wear our shoes inside the dojo because we don't want the floor to get dirty because as I said, we're practicing it barefoot. Number two, Kendo is loud. It's shouty. Uh, you shout a lot in Kendo. That is both before you make strikes and at the moment you make the strike as well. Basically, in Kendo, the the kind of idea is that we make strikes that are a perfect unification of the sword, the body, and the spirit. And the sword, of course, is how we swing the sword, our body is moving, and our spirit manifests itself through our voice. This has very practical applications, but before um, we start an encounter, when we face off against an opponent, we'll start with a loud shout, what's called a kakegoe. Yeah! It's often referred to as kiai. Yeah, like this towards our opponent. This might help offset them. It helps build up our spirits so that we're ready to get involved and stuck in with the fight. Also, when we make strikes, we call out the name of the target that we're striking. Not beforehand, okay, because then they'll know what we're going to hit. Yeah, but at the moment that the strike lands, we shout the name of the target. Those names are men, that's the head. Kote, the forearm. Do, that's the body. And ski, that's the thrust to the throat. Don't really do that technique until later on, but that means that when you hit in the head, you shout, man, or you hit the forearm, this is called kote, kote. If you hit the, the body, this is called do, do, like this. And the uh, thrust to the throat is called ski, ski, like this, okay? So you have to get used to shouting. It's a bit embarrassing at first, I totally understand. I felt the same myself when I first started out in kendo, but Everyone goes through it, you, get, you do get to kind of, you get used to it uh, and it gets, it certainly gets easier once you start wearing the armor as well and you've got, got a kind of mask there. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, you, I, I understand it's a little bit embarrassing, but if you push yourself through that, you'll definitely um, get used to it and you won't feel so self-conscious about it once you realize everyone else is in the same boat. Number three, uh, Kendo is not completely painless. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have the uh, armor, 
It's called the Borga or Kendorga. Uh, that's there to protect us from the strikes from the bamboo sword, the Shinai. Um, those strikes um, generally um, don't hurt so much. Uh, it depends on how hard the other person hits. If they hit too hard, sometimes it can be a little bit painful. But the, the Borga itself, the armor itself, is quite good at protecting you. Um, there are other things, though, that are a little bit painful. Sometimes um, it's things like blisters. You get blisters on your hands from swinging the shinai a lot um, until you get used to it. It's a bit like a guitar player. I don't play the guitar, but I've heard that uh, guitar players uh, get sort of blisters or pains on the end of the fingers from pressing the, the strings against the fretboard uh, until their, their skin hardens here and that goes away. The same thing happens in kendo. You tend to get um, blisters here until these sort of hard calluses um, develop like I've got on my hand. Um, I'm not sure if you can see on the camera, uh, but these, um, the, you know, so the blisters sort of stop happening with practice. Same thing happens on your feet as well, unfortunately. You do, um, especially if your footwork isn't correct. Um, if your footwork is bad, then it's easy for the skin on your feet to tear. Um, and it's just a, a matter of time, really, whilst you get the technique right for that to stop happening. Um, obviously as well, it is a full contact martial art, so sometimes accidents happen, uh, people fall over, people pull muscles, that's probably the most common cause of injury is like muscle strains or, um, you know, that sort of thing, um, pulling muscles, what, what have you, occasionally you might fall over. Um, but the actual striking, within reason, again, if somebody's a little bit overzealous uh, with the striking, sometimes that can sting a little bit. But that's just a good point for you to remember because when you're striking somebody, you've got to remember that at some point they're going to be striking you back, okay? <laughs> Number four, perhaps the most controversial point of all, uh, Kendall will not make you into an expert sword fighter, a duelist or a samurai. I've talked about this a little bit on my channel already, but basically um, Kendall is indeed the way of the sword. That's literally what it means. And the purpose of Kendall is actually to um, improve our character through the applications of the principles of the sword, okay? That means that what we are doing, we're striving to overcome um, our own deficiencies, our own troubles, um, and to improve our own character through hard and rigorous training um, and applying the principles of the sword. What that means is, it means that we're not trying to figure out what's the best way to win a sword fight. The shinai or the bamboo sword, it's not a direct replacement for a katana or a Japanese sword. Hence, it's a different size, it's a different weight. Instead, it exists as a tool to help us achieve something more than simply fighting, but actual self-improvement, as well as learning to respect ourselves and our fellow human beings. I know that does sound like a lofty goal, but it really does work and it's super rewarding. So even if you thought you were going to get into kendo and become an expert duelist, um, I still recommend going along, giving it a try, because there's so much still to be gained from it. Okay, number five, this is the last one. Number five is all about the cost. How much does kendo cost? Definitely something you need to know about. Obviously, there's the equipment, but there's everything else as well that's attached to kendo and the practice of it that does indeed cost money. The first thing you're going to need to think about, of course, is the practice fees. When you go along to a kendo club, that club is generally renting the space from another body. Usually it could be a school or a sports center. Sometimes there are some clubs that own their own properties, but they're quite rare. But even in those situations, they still have overheads to cover, bills to pay and all that sort of thing. So that means that to have a kendo club in that practice area means that it's gonna cost money. Generally, most clubs tend to collect a practice fee. These practice costs really depend on the area as well as the other overheads that the club has to cover. I don't know where you're based in the world, uh, so your currency may vary, but it depends. It could be anything from uh, a few dollars a time, five or ten dollars a time. It could be, uh, or euros, five or ten euros, pounds, whatever. You could probably tell I'm British from my accent. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe they'll have a monthly fee, sort of 25, 30, 40, 50 a month, something like that. And um, the best thing to do is get in touch with the club and find out what that is. They might even have it up on the website. In order to practice kendo safely and with peace of mind, we all have to be associated with some kind of insurance. This is all done through the Kendo Federation. Now, the Kendo Federation works in a way that there's an international federation that governs 
Kendo across the, the globe. Then you have member federations that are attached to each country. They're, they they sort of are linked to the international federation. And then the, uh, the country federations govern Kendo in the specific com- countries that they're in. In some countries where there's a lot of people practicing Kendo, there may be further federations under that. Um, so perhaps a regional federation or even even more so like a city federation or something like that. These federations generally also require some kind of membership fee. Um, It's usually some sort of annual fee. Again, it could be uh, really dependent on the area. Could be anything from sort of 50 to 100, um, whether that's dollars, euros, whatever, uh, a year. It could be a monthly thing. You'll need to uh, go and check with uh, the federation. It's probably got a website. It might even have the fees listed on the website. But if not, um, you best ask in the club that you're going to join. They'll know all about it because they'll need you to be part of that federation in order for you to be able to practice Kendall properly in that club. That's not money wasted though, because membership of the Federation means that you are legit practicing Kendo uh, and you're also able to participate in things like tournaments, gradings. We have a grading system in Kendo. It's not like some martial arts where um, there's different colored belts. Uh, We don't have an outward expression of our grades, but you tend to have a a series of what are called Q grades, um, which is what would be representing the colored belts in a martial art like Judo or Karate and then you have the dan grades which would be representative of uh, the black belts um in compared to other martial arts like judo or karate actually the first dan or what would be the first black belt is generally set at a reasonably uh, lower level compared to other um other arts it, it doesn't take so long to get there um because we tend to consider the higher dan grades as our kind of senior grades And then, of course, there's equipment. You can probably tell by looking at Kendall that there's quite a lot of equipment involved. Generally, the equipment would consist of a shinai. That's a bamboo uh, sword that we use for striking practice. A bokto, which is a solid wooden sword, which is used for kata practice and is not used to strike anyone. And perhaps a bag to put them in. These would be the first pieces of equipment that you'd need to get started. Though I expect you wouldn't need them the first time you went along to the club. Many clubs even have ones that they can lend out for you to use for the first few weeks. A uniform or a kendogi and hakama, that's the top and the bottoms that we wear uh, for kendo practice, would usually not be required for the first few months. The armor or the bogu or kendogu uh, would not be required for several months after starting uh, your kendo journey. As with anything when it comes to equipment, there's a huge range of prices you could expect to pay. My advice on this is if you're really serious about Kendo, you really do want to continue practicing, is not to go too cheap right from the start. There are some places out there you can get super, super cheap stuff, but unless you want to buy it twice, you'd be better off spending a little bit more from the start and getting something that's going to last you that little bit longer. Of course, the biggest financial outlay comes from the armor or the burger. There are loads of options available for this. There are some very, very cheap sets available online and some people even go and buy them secondhand. And although this seems at first like it's a great way to save money, what people who do this find is that they have to buy another set within a year or two of having bought that one. That's because the quality is so low or the fit is so bad that they can't continue to practice seriously and certainly not well enough to get through things like gradings or tournaments. You don't have to go out there and get the most expensive armor that you can, but it's definitely worth saving that little bit extra and getting something that's going to last you so that you don't have to buy twice. So that was five things that you need to know all about Kendall. If you are going to go and start Kendall, I really do think you should, even if some of those things are a little bit contrary to what you were thinking originally, definitely get down to the Kendall Club and give it a try. Make sure you subscribe to The Kendall Show as well because I post loads of content about Kendall and now you're starting Kendall, you're going to learn loads and loads from the videos that I put out there. It's definitely worth looking at our back catalogue of videos as well because we've got loads of instructional videos about the basics of Kendall as well as some of the more advanced techniques and I also post up frequent rant style videos where I take questions from the audience, people write them in the comments on our Facebook group, stuff like that and I answer them on there too. 
Finally, this channel is made possible because of KendoStar. KendoStar.com is a Kendo equipment website. So we talked about the cost of Kendo equipment earlier in the video. You can get onto KendoStar.com right now and you can check exactly what sort of prices uh, you'd be looking at for decent quality uh, Kendo equipment that's gonna last you a long time. Kendo Star is a company that I formed myself after working in Japan for several years at some of the top manufacturers. I decided it was time to make a brand of kendo equipment that was specifically designed and tailored for kendo practitioners around the world. All orders have free international shipping, so get over to kendostar.com and check out what we've got. Finally, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that sort of thing, and I'll see you all next time in the next video. Thank you for watching.